You're gonna hear the music in the background because I love to listen to music when I cook. And I'm cooking, my, uh, my husband is normally only supposed to work one Wednesday a month. But for some reason, because they're so short-handed at his job, they, he's having, they're having him work more than one, um, one day. So, um, one Wednesday. So he's working this Wednesday. So I like to make the big dinners for him when he's working on Wednesday because then I could actually, if it's something I have not made for you on my channel, I can record it and even do it live for you without being interrupted and without having to pause it for him if he's coming in and out. Um, I know I every time I put it on my channel, but I know sometimes so when people don't check the community board and all that. So I'm going to put this to where I can see the chat. So if anybody does come in and says hi to me, I don't miss anybody because I don't want to. I always feel bad if somebody says hi and then I can't see what you're saying. But what do you think of the angle? For anyone who watches the replay or comes into the live, I played with it and I actually set the tablet on my stove. Bad thing about it is mm, it's going to have to get hot, the stove is, because it's going to heat up. So we'll see how it, my tablet reacts to getting hot. I may have to move it over there, but for the mixing part, I'm, I'm hoping I can keep it here for now. Um, <laughs> just in so that you can see me better. So I'm going to go ahead and start heating up the stove so that when I'm done with the mixing and everything, I can put the meatloaf in there. Okay. Hey Sean, how's it going? So, we're going to make meatloaf together today. And before I do, and before I heat the stove up, I'm going to taste test something for you guys. So, anyways, you know I'm notorious for trying new things. This is by, this is called Jumix. And I looked up how to say this fruit. It's called uh, Ganam, Ganara, um, fruit, nectar fruit. And I've never had any of these before, any of these fruit juices in a can before. It's all like Spanish, Mexican. I see them at work and in the, when, and where all the Mexican food is. And I've been wanting to try some of these, but I just, I don't know. Uh, there's always too many things to try. So I haven't. And my sister-in-law gave this to me. So I'm going to try it today. But here's the funny thing. Um, check the lid. and Check the how it's bubbled up here. My husband says, okay, this is not going to be a fun one for you to taste test. He says, you may end up having an accident, an explosion all over you in the room you're in. And so I'm doing this thing. This is something a girlfriend taught me a long time ago. You want to tap the can. And usually it kind of helps keep the fizz down and keeps it from exploding on you. Um, also, it just may be hard to get it open. Period. So this is going to be a fun fun taste test. If you are a first time viewer to my channel, please do not forget to hit that little red subscribe button to like, with, like this video, comment on this video, especially if you're a YouTube creator at the end and go back in when the live stream ends and then comment on it for me so that other YouTubers can find you. Like right now, Sean in the pack is in and I want it to be easy for them to find you when this replays before the live chat shows up. Yep, it's doing exactly what I thought. Ooh, I got it. It didn't explode on me. So, and share with anyone who you think may enjoy this video and want to learn what meatloaf is and how to make it themselves if they've never heard of it or are just trying to get new ideas on how to make it. But here we go. Definitely don't forget about Dixie's friends. Ooh. I'm going to have to buy these other flavors. This is really good. Mmm. I want more. <laughs> I want more. This is good. <laughs> yeah, if it would have exploded, it would have been crazy. It would have made a, a good blooper for a live video, though, right? Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay. So, ingredients. What do you need to make meatloaf? I'm going to show you the, gen the general way, general, normal ingredients you're supposed to have to make a meatloaf. I'm making a couple, three substitutions, and I have my reasons for making the substitutions. Okay? I will have to take the live chat down in points on my phone 
so that I can look up ingredients because I typed it up on my phone. It's on my phone what I'm supposed to put in and how much of. So and forgive me if I miss until I'm seeing you when I'm trying to mix the ingredients together and get it all into the bowl. Uh, for either the glaze, because you put a glaze on a meatloaf, or for the actual meatloaf part. So, in part, you're going to do for the actual meatloaf, you need one half of medium onion, diced. You need breadcrumbs to hold the meatloaf together. I always use seasoning salt on my hamburger. It helps give it a little extra oomph. Okay? You're going to use milk butter and to keep going we have to use onion powder garlic powder for the seed for the glaze or icing for the meatloaf i'm substituting ketchup you're supposed to use ketchup on your meatloaf i'm using baby ray's hot sauce and then baby ray's barbecue sauce brown sugar and you're supposed to use white vinegar I'm not really into white vinegar so I'm using lemon juice concentrate reason you use white vinegar is it has a taininess to it so the perfect substitute for something that you want to tain to would be lemon juice so I'm using lemon juice instead you're supposed to use ground pepper, black pepper and salt Okay. Oh, did I say milk? I don't know if I told you the milk. You need milk too. Sorry. I'm just trying to remember what I said and what I didn't say. But here's the other substitute. You're supposed to use two pounds. People don't realize how healthy meatloaf actually is for you. You're supposed to use extra lean ground beef. Extra lean ground beef. Yes, the recipe calls for you to use extra lean ground beef. That way you don't have as many drippings. And that makes any sense. Not as much fat dripping off the meatloaf while it's cooking. Okay. And so, one, I'm supposed to use two pounds. Now remember, two pounds of extra lean ground beef. So here you go with my proof that I'm doing that. Although, that's only one pound. So what is my second pound? I want to add extra flavor. And this is something my mom raised me on. She used to go to the East Side Market all the time when I was little. This is, my mom was a type of person that didn't like to spend money. But she would spend money on her meats. We would go to a specialty market to get the meats. She would always get one pound of hamburger and one pound of sausage. That's how she would make her hamburgers, her spaghetti sauce, her chili sauce, all of it. Because it gives it an extra oomph. So, we are going to use one pound of ground beef, and hamburger ground beef, and one pound of sa ground sausage for our meat. Okay, and I think this angle is better because usually I have it way over there and you're kind of straining to see me. I thought it'd be better to have a close up and I decided, I told my husband, I'm hoping it all works good in here um, so you can watch me mix it because you actually are supposed to, and another thing, rule of thumb, I don't know what it is about making a meatloaf, but you never ever mix a meatloaf with spoons or using a blender or using a, a mixer like you would for a cake. That's a big no-no. Hamburger is meant to be kneaded with your hands. So just a tip, make sure when you make a meatloaf, you're willing to get your hands nice and dirty with raw meat and then wash them off really good afterwards, okay? So get ready, let's go. Okay, starting out and then of course this disappears for a little bit it's because I'm having to look at the ingredients that I wrote out. Ah, uh, you like baby rays too, Sean? Me too. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take the ground beef first and this is where my seasoning salt comes in. Uh, okay. Okay, well, hey, I want to make sure you guys can see me doing this. So there we go. Bye bye, seasoning salt's done. Don't need it no more. It's done. Okay, I'm going to turn the oven on. 
Oven needs to be preheated to 350, 375. 375 if you want a slow cooker, 350 if you want a fast cooker. Here's the, here's the deal. My oven runs 25 degrees hotter. So basically I'm cooking it at 375, so I'm, I'm speed cooking it. It's still gonna take up to 55 minutes to cook though. That's the kicker. So let me, I have to do this. I don't know what it is. Something is wrong with my clicking thing. So I have to get it just right. One ingredient I meant, forgot to mention because I forgot to pull it out too, so that's my bad. We need eggs. You use eggs and eat both. So let me grab them out before I forget. Okay? Because that'll be a big no-no if I forget the eggs. Shannon! How's it going? I don't think I made you a moderator on this channel yet. Give me a minute. Okay, that should be coming to you, okay? It's so weird how when you're doing it live on your tablet or your phone, all of a sudden your chat shows up and then it disappears like, um, like it never existed. And so it always makes me take a second look. Okay. Good, I'm glad you're doing good. Thanks for coming in, girl. Have you ever had meatloaf before? I just told a friend about meatloaf and they're like, you like meatloaf? I don't know if it's because they never had it. They don't know what it is, but I hope if so, if they never really, their family's never made meatloaf. There's a lot of people out there that have not had meatloaf. They don't know what it is until they see it at a restaurant and they go, ew, that sounds gross. But if they knew how it was made, they would probably try it. Just saying, because it's actually pretty good. You like hamburgers, you like spaghetti sauce, you like chili. You like meatloaf. Just saying. Okay. This is the fun part. Oh, I hate the way it always looks when you do this. <laughs> Get him out of his bags. Okay. I want the full amount of meat. Thank you very much. Come here. He has to talk to my stuff, so excuse me. And I'm playing Netflix, so I'm playing the copyright free channel, YouTube channel that's got millions and millions of subscribers and I can't understand why the music is so good. That's what's playing in the background if you want to know what it is. Come on, I want all the meat. Okay, I'm being nitpicky now, so tell me to stop. I don't need every little bit. I'm getting OCD about this. This is so stupid. Okay, I gotta wash my hands. Give me one sec. Okay, so then I need a knife. Yeah, I got my scissors right there. So I need to. I'm just gonna use a steak knife to work. We have too much plates. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Trying to make it so you can everything I'm doing. I'll move it back. If I feel like my tablet is getting, I'm trying to feel my tablet. If my tablet's getting too hot, then I'm going to have to move you guys back across over there. And I'm sorry. But I'm trying not to so you can see me really good. Okay, we got to cut the onion.
Mm-hmm. I'm going to try cool now. I don't know what you hear. Ever since I cut myself that one time on my hand, Cody, if he was in right now, he'd be getting a little really nervous for me. <laughs> Using a knife. And it's the first time I've ever cut myself with a knife. Like, not plain. As long as I've cooked, I've cooked since I was teenage. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I was like, uh, that was a little kind of a surprise to me. When it happened. First time for everything, though, right? Okay. So, I get impatient when I get to cutting. And I'm not like a chef, so I can't sit there and just, you know, just whip it up like a stuff does really quick. It takes me forever, so I'm sorry I'm slow. I know I am. I admit I am. Don't hate me. Okay, so I'm trying to get half of this. So I probably need about this much more. I got an idea for this onion, so I'm leaving it out. Just a thought that hit me. So we're not going to throw that away. We're not going to put it in the fridge. We're going to leave it right there. Dice this baby up good. This is going to be the slowest part of the cooking video, I promise you. There's me doing this. It takes me forever. Why? Am I not faster? Okay, my tablet feels okay. I don't want to ruin my tablet for this. I definitely want more of those juices. I'm gonna have to see if I can find more of them. Because that is really, really yummy. Never had them before. I like, I know that's like a Spanish drink. Hi, Mom! So, I don't know. I think this is diced pretty good. So, we're gonna put that in. Oh, I hate what it does in my eyes. Oh, why? Just why? No. I know there's a trick to it, but I never can remember what it is to keep that from happening to you. Woo! Okay. I'm going to have to hide the chat for a minute. Hi, Sock Explorer. Make you a plate? All right, I'll do it. Mwah. It's so good to see you. How are you doing, Nora? Okay, I'm high. Well, oh, wait a minute. I got the chat in the corner. Okay, sweet. I got it playing on my phone so I can kind of see uh, who's coming in. Okay, so this is where I get in, uh, get where I have to have something in front of me. So I need one teaspoon of butter. My mom will tell you you never mix mix meatloaf with anything but your hands. She's the one who raised me that way, taught me to do it that way. Okay. Two eggs. Carefully. I want to make sure no shell gets in here, so I very peel it back very slow and careful, and then I watch. I see anything. I grab it out. And normally, I do really good. I'm not getting nothing in, but I think I did this time. Okay, I got it. Oh, actually, it's an onion. I thought it was um, I thought it was a piece of shell. It wasn't. It was a piece of onion sliding around. Okay, never mind. Go for it. Maybe I better put my glasses on. I'm teasing. And glasses are really only for um, astigmatism, but I do read better with them. Um, like small print and stuff, I see better from wearing my glasses. But I have astigmatism that I was because of a birth defect. So three fourths cup of milk. Oh man, I did. Okay, okay. 
here we go. Three fourths cup of milk. I'm really picky about doing it just exactly the thing for me. I don't like being even a little bit over. It drives me nuts. Okay. So three fourths cup of water of milk. I said water, guys. This is like like water. No, no, it does not. Okay, milk can go in the fridge. Jeez, Vanilli. I hate when I do stuff like that. If you missed my taste test at the beginning, I'm drinking this right here during the life. I, I recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's very good. Three fourths. See this? But this part is the easy part, I swear. Okay, so we're using stove stop tuffing, savory herbs, breadcrumbs. Let's see if I pour this all over. Let's see if I'm trying to open this. Not there yet. Oh my goodness. I don't know what would happen if I did too many breadcrumbs, but anyway, here we go. Breadcrumbs going in. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, here comes the fun part. <laughs> now, whenever I mix meatloaf, this is the only thing I hate about making meatloaf. Right here is this part. So let me make sure. Three fourths diced onion. This is an OCD for me. I have to repeat my recipe either in my head or out loud to make sure I didn't miss an ingredient because it drives me nuts. Okay, two eggs, one teaspoon of butter, three fourths cup of milk, three fourths cup of Italian bread, breadcrumbs or seasoning, and of course, two pounds of meatloaf, of meat ground lean ground beef and one pound of sausage is how i did this one pound of sausage one pound of lean ground beef so here we go it's time to get dirty now i told my husband i hate mixing this because when cold meat it makes my arms ache all the way up to my elbows and my mom says it does the same thing to her so my husband made a suggestion he says run your hands under hot water first then start mixing it so i'm gonna try it it doesn't hurt to try something, right? Okay, I'm going to bring this up so I can see everybody talking again. There we go. All right, I got you guys back up again. All right, here we go. Time to break up this meat. Some pieces. Oh, yeah, I took it out to fall out my yesterday just the right time. Now you gotta be careful not to over knead. That's the thing about making a meatloaf. It can be over kneaded very easily. And then it'll come out dense instead of the way it's supposed to, it's supposed to with the texture and you don't want that. So you wanna just do it enough that you get all the ingredients mixed in and put together right here. So how's everybody's day going? Kind of had a me day since my husband was off. I had a, had my sorry to the guys in the group chat and my yearly this <laughs> yearly ladies thing this morning. Everything checked out fine. I got yelled at for not getting a mammogram, of course. I haven't had one in a while, and I just can't afford it. So I just do my own breast exams and watch it close. All right, now see this is what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see it. Shoot. I don't want it to slide on my hands. But see how that looks? That looks just about right. Tipping it under. Okay. I don't want my cats getting hold of raw meat. It's not a good thing for them. Okay. So, let me get the pan that we're going to use. I think this is mixed perfectly. And then, and this one does not call for using a loaf pan. Because it's two pounds worth. You don't use a loaf pan for this one. A lot of times you get a meatloaf pan or a bread pan. And that's how you cook your meatloaf. 
this is supposed to be done on a baking on a cookie sheet so instead what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take it and put in in what we did did when my husband used the things he used to cook the turkey because I don't like the idea of just putting it on a um, cookie sheet because a lot of there's some drippings grease drippings when it's finished and that's going to be a lot of fun pulling that out and not getting that all over the floor This is what I'm going to use, guys. So I'm going to get. Oh, I should have bought this ahead of time. Actually, never mind. Let's do this. Oh, come on, you. I'll break. Doesn't matter, just as long as it works. Okay, we're going to try to see how easy it slides out. I mean, you don't even need to use this. Ah, oh, sweet. Because of the egg and stuff in it, it slid right out. <laughs> oh, I didn't even need this. Even better. Last time I made meatloaf was probably when we've been married five years. I quit making meatloaf when we moved into this house. My husband was tired of meatloaf. He didn't want no meatloaf, no part of it. So yeah, hi Lou, how's it going? No mom, I've never thought about freezing half after making it. I can do that. Okay, here we go. I gotta make the loaf, let's see. Yes, I wanna make sure you guys can see. So what I have to do now, the next part is you gotta turn it into a loaf. So you're gonna take it and just gently shape it. See how I'm doing? You don't wanna push it too hard. But you want to gently shape it and this is how you turn it into your loaf but we haven't had a meatloaf in a long time so this meatloaf is probably going to last no more than two days even though we're both trying to eat in smaller portions because we're both trying to diet it's not going to last because we haven't had meatloaf in a long long time and Brenton's very excited about having homemade meatloaf I kind of want to get it into a square shape if I can like a rectangular shape all the way around and the reason being is it's just going to be easier to slice the pieces off now see when you put it together it's really not that big it looks big but you got to remember this baby is going to shrink up as it heats up okay so what I'm going to do probably not my mom's gonna yell at me I'm probably not supposed to put the glaze on yet but I'm probably going to and I'll tell you why because I want you guys to see me make it so I could always put, make a second batch of the glaze and put it on again right after it comes out so What I'm going to do, I'm going to gently, 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 gently put this up here. Okay. Oh, that's so funny. So not all the bread can be on there. They were supposed to. Okay. But I'm pretty sure I had enough because I kind of had a little over amount. What the breadcrumbs are mainly for is to kind of hold the meatloaf together. So you don't want to overdo the breadcrumbs. It's good if they have flavor into them to add flavor to the meatloaf. But you don't want it to be the main thing that you taste when you taste the meatloaf. It's just like the glue that holds it together, basically. That's why you use breadcrumbs. Okay. So let me get... Uh, hold on. I'm gonna use this so you guys can see me as I make it okay I got my measuring spoons out and like I said I got an idea with onions someone told me to try bacon on it my husband said no 
And I'm tempted to put like one or two slices of bacon over the top of it and see what happens. It's not going to hurt nothing. Okay, um... Okay, Mom, I didn't write... Well, wait a minute. I did write it. Never mind. I'm looking at my phone as I'm making it. So, yes, I did write it out. And so, just never mind. Yes, I can get you a copy of it. Hold on. Okay, get it for a minute. I won't see the live chat again. So, just hold on with me, everyone. Always have a tendency to tell people to hold your horses. And everybody that doesn't understand that expression looks at me like I'm a nut. Okay. <laughs> so, here we go. We need two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar take it down because I don't like it to make a mess when I open it okay so I need two and a half tablespoons so here's one tablespoon here I yay this is the fun part let's see how messy I'm gonna be getting right now I think this is the part where I'm we're gonna see messes and there's one. I wanted to use barbecue sauce instead of ketchup for something different. So I'm not following the recipe to a T. Okay. So here we go. So that's two. Oh, I need to do one half. Just a minute. I'm not done. Susie's, his sister's needing help with a bike, putting a bike together, and I, I told her, and she even called me today, and I was taking my nap, and I was like, I texted her back, I'm like, Suze, he's working, he doesn't normally work on Wednesdays in her defense. Um, so, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, I was like, where's the onion powder? I lost it. Okay, let me get it all the way out so I can spread it all the way out so I can see what I'm doing here. Because I was like, something's not adding up. Okay. These are brand new. So I'm going to have to open them. Oh! Well, maybe this one ain't. We must have used the garlic powder for something else. One teaspoon. So that was a tablespoon. I hate this lady. There we go. Definitely don't want to overdo the garlic powder. That would be, you want to use a little less over compared to a little more. It'll overpower everything. Okay. A little fun. It's better to do a little less than a little over. Okay. I need to use one half teaspoon of onion powder. So. so this is onion powder right now and we're supposed to only use one half a teaspoon of onion powder. Mm. Okay. One fourth teaspoon of ground black pepper. And this is brand new. So I'm opening I'm opening a new one. Oh come on. There we go. Okay, so one fourth teaspoon of ground pound black pepper. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. One four teaspoon of ground black pepper. Um, and then I'm supposed to put 
the same amount of salt in. I'm using Himalayan salt, guys. It's supposed to be healthier for you, so I'm using Himalayan salt. Okay. And then three, four, one and one half tablespoon of white vinegar. I'm substituting lemon juice for it. So here we go. One tablespoon. One and one and a half tablespoons. So here's one tablespoon here. One half. And then three fourths cup of ketchup. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the first thing in here or not. I think it's one fourth. Wait a minute. I think I do. I'm trying to think of it. This is one third. Hold on a minute. Three fourths. So it's three one fourths. Okay. So hold on one fourth one. I grabbed the right one in the first place. So we're going to use Baby Ray's. So I need three of these babies. My goal is to have this in by five. I got 15 minutes, guys. 15 minutes. Am I going to make it? I need three of these. So there we go. So I'm just going to stir it with this spoon. Might as well. And this is the glaze. So here's how I'm going to do this because I was told to try bacon. I'm just kind of kind of, kind of weird about bacon. On a meatloaf, I just don't know why. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get two pieces of bacon out. I'm going to halfway warm them up because I hate it when I love filet mignon wrapped in bacon. The thing I don't like about it is the way it's cooked in the oven. Half the time, there's parts of it that's still kind of raw. I'm just, I don't like that. microwave. Let me get my meat little back down. And I'm going to put it on here so it cooks with the meat. Okay, I'm going to now bring back up the thing. I haven't cooked meat in open so long. I think she's doing okay. Hey Gavin! I'm sorry! I didn't say hi to you right away. I had the thing down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good to see you. I couldn't see you on there. That's the only reason why I haven't said hi yet. Okay, so I'm baking. I'm not finished with the sauce. Something tells me I'm supposed to do the sauce after, right after it comes out. Including just like you do a cake. So here's what I'm gonna do. The rest of the onion, instead of saving it, I'm going to, I'm cutting it right now. I'm going to put it in the pan around the meatloaf. And then you won't eat that. It'll just be to cook with it and give an extra little oomph. 
I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm not going to cook it in the slice it in small pieces now. Let's not cut our hand. Okay. So I'm going to just throw it in like this around the sides. Kind of. So that's kind of sort of touching it, but not touching it. I don't know if that makes any sense. So as it cooks, in the mar meat marinade, some of the flavor from the onions is going to marinate into it. This needs to be washed now that I done that. Okay. It's just an idea enough. So whenever I cook, I look up recipe ideas and other people's recipe ideas and I actually improvise a heck of a lot. Like the lemon juice instead of vinegar. Barbecue sauce instead of ketchup. I make it my own. But isn't that what a real cook is supposed to do? You're supposed to make it your own. Yeah, Lou, I'm sure she's okay. And that's probably just fine. Gavin, you've been doing good with your live gaming. I've been going in and doing little sneak peeks. Because usually when you're live, I'm getting ready for work. I'm at work. Things like that. But I promise I have been going in and giving you some support. Okay. So we're going to lay it there and right here. Because I was told to try this. My husband says don't. But we use turkey bacon. It's healthier bacon anyway, so why not? Okay. So then we're going to put the glaze on. And I want to put it on now. Because I think it would be yummy to cook it with it. If I always remember mom putting on after. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook it with it. And then I'm going to put, make another batch. Set it aside in the, in, the, in the microwave. In the refrigerator. And then put it on again. I just think it will add flavor to the meatloaf as it cooks. And that's why I'm doing it this way. And also I wanted to show it to you guys. Because I'm honestly not planning on keeping you here for the whole entire hour that it's cooking because I feel like it's going to be boring I mean I could take you in there and we could all chat and visit like we normally do so write in a like chat if you want me to keep this going for a little while and then you can watch me make the sides or if you want me to just cut it off here and then show you how dinner is finished up say it for now or forever hold your peace <laughs> as they always say when somebody's getting married we go. I'm going to turn my light on. Set my timer on my phone. Let's see. Who wrote me? Oh, it's Brent. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we, um, you did a no-no last week, so my husband's like, please, please, I'll remember this time. Okay. Let's get this clock started. It's church night, and we actually can tie in on Zoom, and since he's working, he wants to tie in. So he's reminded me to tie in, basically. No, I don't want 30 hours. Get back here. Ready up. Thank you. Move out of my way. I cannot see. There we go. All started. Woohoo! Meatloaf is in, guys. So now I'm free to talk if anybody wants to talk to really talk. So I hope everyone who's watching today is having an amazing day. And I'm very, very sorry. It's like when I'm doing these cooking things, I do my best to visit with all of you as we go. Nora has been, as um, who came in for a very short period of time, 
I'm a stock explorer. She's going to tell you all the world about stocks, and she's also into doing the scratch off tickets with friends. And they do the stream yard thing, they're side by side doing scratch off tickets together. Um, things like that. So, if you're into that kind of thing, and she tells you which stocks to buy and when to buy them. She knows when they're up, when they're down, and she usually comes on and makes sure and lets everybody know hey, 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 this one is down. This is a good time to get in. Bye. She's really, really was jumping on me about um, the Walmart stock. <laughs> because they split it and she's like that's a good time to buy it so she was like make sure you get some of that and I personally wrote her and asked her if that was a good thing or a bad thing because I don't know if it is it isn't And we had a lot of people panicking at my work, worried that it was actually not a good thing. The spot split off. And don't forget to hit the like button, guys, if you haven't already. This is nasty old crumbs for so say goodbye to it. Okay. Cleaning up. And now we just gotta wait for it to cook. And it looks like nobody's talking. <laughs> in the live chat so and that means it's time for me to let you guys go and say goodbye i mean if you guys were still visiting each other or visiting with me i would keep this live stream going so that everybody could visit with each other and talk to each other but it doesn't look like anybody's wanting to do that so that means it's time for me to turn this off and go about my the rest of my day so i hope all of you are having an amazing amazing day and thank you so much for coming and joining me now you know how to make a meatloaf I'm going to put a sword on later to show you how it turned out. And I forgot to tell you at the very beginning of this video, I need to assume, give all my subscribers and viewers a huge apology because I had an overload of shorts on my, on my um, phone. So I uh, uploaded, scheduled, you can schedule your shorts. If your viewers and ones who don't play with their YouTube that much may not know this, but you can actually schedule your shorts. And so I scheduled all of my shorts. And so every two hours, a short will be playing for you. A new short will be coming on and you'll be getting a notification for, for every two hours until 10 p.m. on Friday night. That's how many shorts I had on my phone. So just, you don't have to, I know the ones who are big time supporters and they like to really try to watch every single one of your videos, da da da. I know they're only, some of them are just from 30 seconds to a minute long, but I am not asking you guys to try to keep up with that many shorts until 10 p.m. Friday night. So, anyway, don't worry about it. Also, if you have not been looking at my community board, have another chance to, this time it'll be more of a chit chat thing and I will be sitting down and talking with you like I do a lot of my impromptu's where I just go in and a whole bunch of people come in in the chat and we're just talking back and forth and having these conversations. I'm doing live class tomorrow night. I do them different now for any of you who haven't seen it. I actually do a um, chit chat thing at the beginning where I chat. I'm also taste testing something very unique. And then we will start live class. I hope my towel is okay. It seems like it's doing fine. It's not overly warm because I set it on the stove. So you guys can see me better. Aw, thanks for checking on her, Gavin. I think she's doing okay. We've just been more stressed about Nat's situation um, because this person who has been trolling Lou and also has been trolling Nat has stolen three more of her videos, stolen three more pictures and three more of her videos. So exact same sound, exact same, and same picture. So basically, it is definitely a copyright infringement when you do that to other YouTubers. So Lou is working very hard to get the word spread and get Latisse completely deleted and terminated. Because she's stealing not just hers, but other ASMR um, channels, videos too. Trying to make it look like her own. She's putting them on as live streams. And I don't know how the heck she's doing it. She probably what she's doing is somehow she's she's pointing the camera at Natalie's video and live stream, live streaming it on her channel, making it sound like it's hers. Guaranteed, that's what she's doing. 
And so it's been a lot of trouble and and I blocked her so I can't report her. So if you guys know who who ASMR is, she hasn't blocked her. She still sees her activity. And she has put a post on her community board trying to rally as many YouTubers out there as she can. How would you like your YouTube videos to be stolen like that? So it's just hard and hopefully I don't get yelled at by YouTube for talking about it because it's a real thing. It's really happening. Hey, hi Cody. Well, you missed you missed it, missed me cutting onion with a knife. I'm sure you're thankful for that. <laughs> you know how she's doing it? Oh, you gotta tell us her secret. Because yeah, this Latisse is a menace. She's a troll and she's a menace. Just saying. Okay. I'm going to stay on for a few more minutes because Cody came in. Cody, I'm going to remake the sauce again. So don't mind me if I miss something. If you want to, write me on Discord and tell me about it. Because I don't want to. I'm going to stop the conversation right here about it. I'm just saying everybody go to Lou ASMR's community board. Because we need all your help to get if you guys like my moderator, Natalie Nicole ASMR. And you want this to stop. I'm seeing her stuff getting stolen and you want to support her and show your support for her Lou has put something on our community board to help you guys get to her channel to report it the more they report it the better that's all I'm gonna say That's how she's doing it. So she's using YouTube pay. So she's paying for YouTube. She's paying for YouTube. Lou, you get this? She doesn't do YouTube for free. She pays money to YouTube so that she can steal people's videos. Gotcha. So she's using YouTube paid version. I'm reading this out loud because people are trying to understand this conversation. I want them to know what she just said. And she's using YouTube paid version and using the copy cutting using the paid version and using the copy video feature and copying it to the desktop is how she's doing it <laughs> I love it Cody that just cracked me up you don't believe in my cutting skills thanks a lot Cody thanks a lot <laughs> After I put a knife through my hand, I mean, it was all over my YouTube. I had pictures of it on my Facebook. I even put a picture of it, a video about it, on my old TikTok, I believe. Yeah. I was so surprised, just. I didn't think I cut myself that hard. It was just like a boom. It's so fast. And I mean, I just. It was like a pin hit. The size. The cut was the size of a pin needle. Like, you know, those little pins that you use in fabrics where it's like really, really tiny, 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 tiny. The head, that's how, the, it was smaller than this. And it looked, it was just about from here to here. That's how the cut was. And it was bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And so Brent jumped, my husband jumped up. And we went in the bathroom because he was helping me because I was trying to hold my hand up so I was going to keep bleeding. And poured peroxide on it and then he wrapped it. My husband is weird. You, <laughs> you could tell he's like a Tom Green person. You probably don't know what that show was. But it's an old time show. And I loved it because you know, just use duct tape. It fixes anything. Oh my god. I had that show made me laugh more than SNL Live and Mad TV. I, Saturday Night Live and Mad TV. But the Tom Green show, I was like on the floor laughing literally all the time with him. He's duct taping car doors, <laughs> like all the way around the car seat. Now the car door stays on and works. I'm like, 
<laughs> oh my god. But he was, he duct taped my hand, put the tape, the bandage on, duct taped it to try to tighten it up, so like a tourniquet. And he didn't realize how much pain I was in. I didn't tell him. I couldn't sleep that night. I was holding my hand above my head and like this all night on my pillow, like above my head. And I could feel it boom, 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 boom. I could feel it like throbbing. Like every time my heart beat, it was like a bam, bam, sharp pain in my hand all the way down to my elbow. And turned out I had tendonitis. I woke up the next morning and I told Brent, I, I don't know how I'm gonna drive to work. I said, honey, I gotta drive to work today. I showed him my hand. It was my right hand. I'm lefted. I'm left-handed. I'm a lefty. Thank God I cut my right hand. So it wasn't my dominant hand. And I got up the next morning and I said, sweetheart, can you help me rewrap my bandage? Because it's still bleeding. And I'm going to take some ibuprofen or a leave and then I'll go to work. This thumb and this finger were five times their normal size. They were like this together. My whole entire hand was blown up three times its size and he started crying. He said, if I knew you were that bad, I would have taken you to the emergency room last night. He said, I had no idea that you cut yourself that bad. And he was like, he was even praying to God. He's like asking him for forgiveness. He says, I've never been to try to get, I'm not trying to kill my wife. He was so freaked out. My husband cannot stand even the slightest little hint of blood. And he just, he's a baby when it comes to it. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, I had tendonitis for four days. I couldn't hardly bend this hand at all. I mean, for my age, I've never had a broken bone, never had stitches in my life. I had stitches for the first time in my life, and I was one, and I'm one of these weirdos that I'm sitting here watching him do it. I was like, oh, this is fascinating. <laughs> I was actually watching him. It's kind of cool how they do the stitch because they numb your hand really good. And then they sew it like a needle, like like I'm putting a hem on a skirt. And I'm like, oh, so that's how they do it. It's kind of cool to watch. I know you think I'm crazy, but it was cool to watch. Thanks, Gavin. Hey, everybody, don't forget to drop me a like. And I keep forgetting to tell people that. Oh, you like that salt, Mom? Oh my goodness. I don't know how I'm getting this height up. And then I'm just all of a sudden catching up with everybody. Gavin, I am doing great. And I probably am really late on, on answering all this stuff and I'm very, very sorry. So that's the whole story is why Cody doesn't like to watch me use knives. She's most likely screen recording, gotcha. Thank you, Lou. I try to be. That's one way to take care of it is using duct tape. I know, right? I don't know. That's so goofy, though. That's what he did. But anyway, I'm so glad you came in. I hope you're doing well. Okay, I'm going to do a real quick job of making a second batch of the sauce. I'm going to be bad. I'm going to taste it. This is the glaze that goes on top of it. I would put it on while it cooks. You're supposed to actually put the glaze on immediately when the meat comes out and kind of warms on it like an icing. Mmm. Oh, it's so good with barbecue sauce. I'm so glad I did it that way. Okay. All right, real quick. I'm going to make one more thing of it. And then I'm going to start the side dishes. Which I'm going to make them very simple. Let's see. 
I'll stay on as long as somebody else is here. I promise I won't leave. If somebody keeps talking to me, I will stay. So, if you didn't see me doing the glaze, I'll repeat out loud what I'm putting in. So you can see, see what I'm doing, hear what I'm doing. Because I don't have it down. You know what? I could do it down again. Because I am wanting to make a second one. Natalie would be in, but she's working. I need three. I'm supposed to use ketchup. I'm using barbecue sauce instead. I need three, one fourth. I'm making two. third and one teaspoon of onion powder oh I don't have it sorry there <laughs> I just realized I didn't put it where I'm supposed to put it sorry this part in time it should go faster because I pretty much know what I'm doing I'm really excited. I haven't made this in forever. So I'm excited about this. I love meatloaf. Okay. And this is one third teaspoon of garlic powder. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. So then it's going to be one fourth tablespoon of that's one teaspoon. Not right here. And just a little bit less. But it's tasting good, so I did good the first time around. Because I took a taste test. I'm going to pull this one away because this is just full. Okay. And then I need one fourth garlic and brown pepper. white vinegar. I use lemon juice instead of white vinegar. I really don't like white vinegar. I think I put too much that time. So I'm not going to put any more. Because that just poured out. I'm going to be nervous. I'll do one tiny thing just to make sure. There. You know, I'll also freak out that I don't need it. I should have went ahead and done it. Okay. Now, we got to add the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll keep going because people are coming in. So I'm going to make the sides, so I'll let you guys see me work on the sides. So two, and you get to see what my hubby's favorite veggie is. I hated it when I first was married, but thanks to my husband, I now like it because I'm always making it up for him like once a week. It's like, oh God, I have to make this again because it's a favorite vegetable. <laughs> Seriously. I like all vegetables. I'm really not a picky eater, but the only thing I did not like was this vegetable. And uh, 
but now I love it because I make it all the time for him. Okay. So I'll have the glaze done. I'll let him go in there. So the second round of the glaze is finished. Move it out. And I'll set it up here in the poster oven. And it can sit there until it's done. Okay. So let me bring back the chat up high so I can see you guys again. Yes, she is. I'm glad you're doing good, Cody. Yeah, that's right. Good girl. Those Karens are not worth it. Okay. Ready? Let's get in there. Want to see what the vegetable is? My mom knows what his favorite vegetable is. I don't know if she's still in or not, though. We also have leftover side salad from yesterday, so we're going to have a side salad plus the meatloaf, so I don't want to overcook. Um, so. Now that you spoke that in, don't you know that you don't speak things into the universe or text things into the universe unless you want it to happen? Like there's things I said, let's see. Hmm. Someone came up to me at work and said, you know what, if your, your workouts are that good, you should sell your workouts on YouTube. You should start making a YouTube video and you'll get so much money off of it. You know what I told them? Now I'm eating my words. I said that will never happen. I will never ever go on YouTube and make workout videos. What am I doing? I'm making workout videos. So I learned that and those are the three magic words you never use. It'll never happen. You want to make something happen? that you really originally at the moment don't want to happen just start and start getting people to say that'll never happen you get them to say that and it's going to happen 100% within six months they're going to be doing it okay Brussels sprouts that's my fair husband's favorite veggie day so I'm making them Brussels sprouts there. I hated these my mom and these were homegrown in a homegrown garden. No chemicals, no frozen bag. Picked out of my mom's garden. Every time my mom would make Brussels sprouts for dinner, she put three of them on my plate and I wasn't allowed to get on get up from the table until I ate those three <laughs> Brussels sprouts. And she was determined to get me to like them. And it was that way until I was until I got married. <laughs> Don't me eat them. I'm like, Mom, you know I don't like to eat. I do now because I started making them every week for my husband. You know how I got myself to like them? I hated Brussels sprouts so much that I smothered them in cheese so I didn't taste the flavor. That's how I started out. Not plain. That's literally how I started out with Brussels sprouts. Okay. So when I make these babies, You're supposed to cover them with a little bit of water. So instead, I started learning that we don't like a lot of water on them. 
So, let's see if I can find a little more good more. So instead of water, because honestly, since they're frozen, they make their own juices and their own water as they're cooking because the ice that's formed on them melts off, turns into water. So you really don't need to add a lot of water. Now, Lou is a great person. She really is. And me and Natalie are very, very happy to have met her and have her as a friend. Okay? Definitely. Okay, here we go. So I use olive oil. And sprinkle it on top. Just two tablespoons of olive oil. Can you hear the sizzle? I got 28 minutes till I pull this baby out. I think we're doing pretty good. My husband is like, yeah, I ended after you put the meatloaf in, in, in the soap. He says, nobody's gonna watch, I'm gonna watch that. That's boring. Nobody's gonna watch it. There's nothing to see after you get the meat. But he's forgetting when you do it live, people come in and visit with you and visit with each other. So it's kind of nice to see on. Got my little bag. So I just cook them. I'm a goofball. I'm sorry. I'm always in stuff like this. I can't even stand still during my workout. I must have been an ADHD kid and never got diagnosed with it. Yes, Shan so you know, Cody, Shannon and Lou know each other outside of YouTube. They're actually sisters, fleshly sisters. Pretty cool, if you ask me. And they both do Day of the Mars channels. Find it. The meat is in the oven. I'm going to cook it a little bit higher because I'm not liking the way it's cooking. I have not cooked the meat open for long, guys. This is all. Actually, it's coming along pretty good, I think. Okay, good, good, good. Um, let me see. I know I can reverse camera. Did you guys want to see how the how the, how the meatloaf is coming along while these are cooking? Um, just a minute. Now, I hope you don't accidentally in the stream. If I do on you guys, then I apologize right now. Okay. There she is. I think she's coming along pretty good, to be honest with you. Okay, yes, I did it. Woohoo! So, we're having... Okay, hold on. Okay, wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get a flip bag. I'm like, flip back! Okay. <laughs> well, for me, Cody, I'm like an only child. I know that sounds weird because all my siblings are older than me. I have a sibling that is 16 years older than me. She's the oldest in the family. She's my sister. And then I have my brother who is 14 years older than me. I now have another sibling that if he had lived, his name was Doyle. 
Were they 12 years older than me? I wish mom was still in listening. She'd be able to say and chime in and tell me for sure how old Doyle will be. He died of Crips disease at four months of age. My mom told me that that was the most heartbreaking death she's ever experienced in her entire life. Um, she would have him in the middle of the bed while she would fold laundry. That's how she did with all us babies. And she'd fold the laundry and she'd play with the baby and coo with the baby while she was folding laundry in the bed. And so she said whenever she'd go to make them you know, fold the laundry, it just would break her heart because there was this bassinet and no baby. Um, <laughs> so... And then I have another sister, long story short, she's, I don't want to call her black sheep of the family, but there's reasons because of my religion, you can't talk to her. And you keep hoping that she will get smart and do what she has to. I don't know how many times her boyfriend has tried to marry her and she won't marry him. That's all she has to do is, to, you see, in our religion, we do this thing where it's like a father grounding their child. And all she has to do is correct no thing. So, like, let's say today, I decided to leave my husband for another man. I'm not going to say those three words. It's never going to happen, and I just did. But let's say I did, and I got myself to fellowship because of it. All I'd have to do to come back is get a little wedding ring on my finger from the man I ran away with, and you know, left my husband for. So, leave my husband with the other man, get the other man to marry me. Boom. Uh, it's been about a year, year and a half of hard work proving to them that I'm repentant, that I'm sorry for what I've done, and I'd be reinstated and be able to come talk to my family like nothing ever happened. Okay? My sister did this when I was 12 years old. And I don't know how many of you know how old I am. That's all she has to do. And you know how many, when he was, they were down for my dad's funeral when I was 19. He said, I asked her numerous times to marry me, and she says no every time. He was trying. He's Catholic. He was trying to make it right. She wouldn't let him. She would not let him. So to this day, I cannot talk to her. So... And my mother... My mother literally cry, prays for her every night that she'll come back. My mom literally cries every night for her. It's as, to her, it's as, as bad as a child dying. Okay? Because she can't have any interaction with her. I have two nieces, which in 2004, they came and spent two full weeks with us. Maybe three during the summer. And we got to know them. And I'm so proud of my nieces. My one niece is a kindergarten teacher. My other niece looks exactly identical to me and my sister. My sister Felicia, who's disfellowshipped, me and her could be identical twins. That's how much we look alike. Um, my brother and older sister could be identical twins. They look exactly alike. You can tell their brother and sister. Um, so anyway, truth be told, my one niece, looks like a splitting image of her mother and splitting image of me and she is what is called she went to school to be a five star what are they called it's like huge degree and it's like an associate degree for um oh gosh i wish fucking floor was in here she would know um for stocks like where she handles like big time companies money or stocks or investments everything she went to school for that um she was like a manager at walmart for a while until she finally got a dream job now she has a dream job i follow her on instagram um, i'm really proud of her she's following me on facebook and that's how i stay connected with my sisters through them sometimes me and my niece will text back and forth and i always ask her how my sister's doing and so and she always tells me. <laughs> so. Okay, not me. That was weird. I just lost my chat. I'm 80. Oh, gee. Cody, thanks a lot. I'm 80. Okay, where's my cane? <laughs> You're awful.
I'm having Brussels sprouts and potatoes on the side. And it looks like it's going to be done way, way ahead of time. We have 28 minutes to go, but it has to rest a while. I didn't remember how long to rest it. You don't talk about half of your family on the internet because... Oh, Cody, I'm so sorry. You know, that's what Natalie has to deal with, too. Natalie doesn't have a close-knit family either. They have one uncle that lives here in Decatur, not correction Mount Zion, but close to Decatur. Um, and he's always there for his, for them. Um, but yeah. Well, I really think it looks good. I like it because they're going to be kind of crispy. My husband doesn't get off till six. Mm, I can't remember if I want to rest this. I need to look that up. Because it's supposed to rest. I don't know how long. Okay, I know the meatloaf is supposed to rest for a while afterwards, and that's when you're supposed to actually put the glaze on, because it keeps it moist as it's kind of. So I got a heat thermometer, and I gotta remember to get that out. But it shouldn't, it looks good, so I feel like I'll be fine. Okay, I need to clean that. Alright, so I have a meat thermometer. It's supposed to be 160 internal temperature. That's how I'll know if it's done or needs to cook a little bit more. But it just needs to be done by 6 or a little after. Um, um, help. I'm looking for my timer. 16 minutes. And then I can check it. Hey, we're doing good, guys. Thank you so much. You've been, you're really making the time pass. I'm waiting for this meat milk to come out. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Sunday night is family night. I'm getting together with my, my sister still in Belize. She won't come back until May. So um, we're going to have family night with my brother and his wife and my mom at my mom's house. So we'll be, I'll be at my mom's house Sunday evening, chilling. We're gonna, we usually all bring something to eat, have family dinner together, and this time we're all gonna bring our favorite pizza. And then Barry, my brother usually bring, very usually brings a side salad, put that together, so we'll have that and we'll have pizza. I usually bring pizza and a dessert, so I gotta figure out, my sister-in-law cannot have Regular dark chocolate or milk chocolate, it makes it have migraines. So it's gotta be white chocolate for her or something vanilla. So I'll have to think of desserts. Usually what I do, if I'm in the mood for bringing a chocolate dessert for the rest of us, I'll get two desserts. So I'll get like some cookies, like macadamia cookies and chocolate chip cookies or something like that. Because we like it to be hand food for the most part, because we're usually playing card games. Card games, dice games, we love Parkle, um, Mexican Train, so we're usually playing kind of some kind of game, so it's kind of nice to be able to eat the food, finger food, it's always the best. Ice cream pizza! Actually, you know what, that probably would not be bad. Ooh! That's what I want to do just once is make my own homemade pizza. I've never made my pizza homemade. I'm going to turn the Brussels sprouts off because they're pretty much done. Um, 
Yeah, I have not done that. So I'm going to do baked potatoes. Probably because it'll be easier and quicker. Um, but Brent doesn't get home till six, so I won't do that until until for another thirty minutes, probably. <laughs> I need to do it. Oh God! If I make it for my first time live on camera and it flops, I'm blaming you guys. <laughs> you guys told me to do it. I'm joking. <laughs> I I won't do that. Hmm. Or will I? Because <laughs> I've never made homemade pizza before. But even my hubby said that. Because we love pizza. And all these years, I've never, I love to cook and I've never made a homemade pizza before. Never. I mean, there's always these easy boxed dough mixes you can buy for making the pizza at work. And I could just get all our favorite things we like to put on it, dice it up, and throw it on. I mean, how hard can it be? Just follow the instructions. Boom. So, I don't know. I should give it a shot. I really should. Maybe I should do it for... Oh, dang it. Because of church, I won't be able to have time to make it family night. Well, that would be awesome to try it for my first time and make it family night. That would be a real treat. <laughs> hey everyone, Jen, make your own homemade pizza. You guys just want to see me now to do another cooking live class. <laughs> That's why. I'm doing a live workout class tomorrow night, and I'm going to try something as a taste test at the beginning. We're going to do the Q&A chit-chat type thing. So I'm going to visit and chat with you guys for a little bit first. On the last two videos last two lives that I've done it this way what I done was um, I started out taste testing something and then visiting and chatting with everybody for a little bit then we worked out then I sat down afterwards and I chatted some more with whoever was still in and I've been noticing a huge difference in an uptick in my views so I don't know what it is about it but people seem to be eating liking it so if they're liking it, then I should keep doing it. You find something your subscribers and viewers like. Keep doing it. Um, my last one has 861 views. So, it's an hour-long video. Workout class video. Heading to 1K views. Getting close up to 1K views. And so, I'm just like, hmm. So, I'm going to try it that way again tomorrow night. Do you guys want to see when I'm going to taste test in tomorrow's live class? Do you want a sneak peek? Make sure you look at my community board. I'm going to start live class between 5 and 6 tomorrow night, okay? And speaking of never typing, that I will never do, that's never going to happen or I'll never do that. Don't do that. Because I've been saying that about something else lately and I'll probably end up doing it and I'll be like, oh, wait, I'm going to eat my words again. So I'm going to eat my words again because a friend posted a picture of this on their Facebook and I told him, ew, that sounds gross. I'm not even going, not even willing to taste test this on my channel. And look what I'm doing tomorrow night. So all you, you want somebody to do something bad enough, all you got to do is get them to say it'll never happen out loud somehow after you tell them to do it and they'll end up doing it. Guaranteed, 100%. My husband believes very strongly that stuff he's speaking in the universe, it's going to happen. I spoke it into the universe. Because it's happening. So, there you go. Boom. I need to start a cooking channel. You really think I'm that good with it? <laughs> That's what I said when I seen the picture. Now, now, Cody, look at it. I'm trying it. Get ready, everybody. You're going to see me gag or throw up for the first time on live camera tomorrow night. So you guys ain't going to want to miss tomorrow night's live. <laughs> I'm probably going to be like, 
I am not a picky eater. My husband is. And Natalie, oh my God, is super picky. But I'm not. I can, I'll eat about anything you put in front of me as long as it's not eyes staring at me and it's not moving. If it's moving and eyes are staring at me, I won't touch it. But otherwise, I will eat it. And I've had African food that is so bland that has absolutely zero flavor to it. And I'm sitting here, um, 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 I mean, because... I don't know if you understand the African culture, they're very hospitable. Every time they would come to visit us, my girlfriend's husband and her, you know, because she married a guy from Africa, he would bring four or five bags full of groceries to the house when we come to visit, my, they'd stay with my mom and to visit us. And, you know, wine and everything, it's just, African culture, they're very, very overly hospitable, and it's, a, um, some cultures, it is a disgrace and a dishonor if you don't accept the food that they fix you and eat it, so I, that might be why my husband and him did not get along, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's why he didn't like him, <laughs> because he would cook really good dinners, I mean, he would put a lot of work into the dinner, Fix us this nice, like, mixed pina colada, extremely strong, like, knock you out and off your seat, strong alcohol. Um, because that's just the way they do it. And, um, anyway, and my husband would eat two bites. Because he's picky, he didn't like it. Whereas I, on the other hand, even if I don't like something, I'll pretend I like it. You can tell when I really genuinely like it, though, because I act different. I'm kind of like, mm, -mm kind of half-hearted. But when I really like something, I moan, I dance, I just, I don't know. So, anyway, so, yeah, I would always eat it and tell them how good it was, even if it was not very much flavor, because I wasn't a picky eater. You're making a new cooking channel, for real? I think that's cool. Sean, when you start it, make sure you send me the link to it so I can support you, okay? Sean's been sending me pictures of all this Carolina Reapers that he's starting to grow and all that. So, yeah. Sorry. I can't help it when I'm listening to Netflix. I love Netflix. I'm so glad they started their channel because it's non copyright. And then that way YouTube creators can put it in their videos. And they're good. You're going to come. Okay, Cody. So you're going to come to my house. And track me down. And then you're going to fix a four course meal. Of every disgusting combination of food. I can think of. And pretend I am Mexican. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, Cody. Thanks. Oh, I have tried rice milk and I didn't think I would like it because I'm very funny about texture that's where I'm picky with my food I don't like lumpy food and so I don't like rice pudding I like rice but not rice pudding because it's sweet and so my sister-in-law true story she doesn't know she knows her Spanish still but not as well as she did I kind of wish she would kept it in practice and she went to school in our religion, you can go to like a school type thing where, and she did it for like a month. And you, she would even have to go out in the ministry because we go door to door and talk to people about our religion. And have to go find Spanish and Mexican people and talk to them in Spanish. And she knew how to say everything perfectly in Spanish. And um, I went to her graduation with her and I spent the whole day and we did go out in the ministry. So we went out that morning knocking on doors. And one of, the, one of the Mexican sisters took me to a door that she had a Bible study with his Mexican family. I about cried, and the reason I did was because even though I'm holding an English brochure and flipping it, I'm following along word for word, scripture for scripture with her. And it's just, it's just a surreal moment when you realize your religion is that united all over the world, that you don't deviate. And how you teach or believe. And 
I about cried. I was listening and watching the family intently as they were sitting while she was studying with them. And I would listen to them go back and forth. And what they fed us was rice milk. The Mexican and Spanish people are also very extremely hospitable people normally. Um, once they're very much into their culture, you walk into their house and they usually have something to eat or drink immediately and greet you with something like that. As soon as you walk in, it's just common thing. And they gave they made us rice milk. <laughs> And I tried it, and I actually liked it. I was like, this is good. <laughs> and normally, I don't like texture stuff. So, I don't know. You might may end up surprising yourself, and I might actually like what you make, Cody. But, yeah, that was a fun day. I loved it. Everything was done in Spanish, so, of course, I could understand. I know some Spanish words because I studied it for a year in high school. So some things, I'll know what you're saying, I'll look, you know, I'll give you a look, because I'll be like, I know what that word means. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, um, it was the funnest day ever. And then they had a big old graduation party for, for her and everyone graduating her class that night. And um, we had so much fun. So I was learning Spanish dances. Oh, I loved it. It was a ball. So, yeah, that kind of stuff is kind of cool for me. I'm uh, sorry for going on the rant. I hope everyone's doing good. And I keep asking you guys that off and on. Because honestly, I feel like I'm talking and I'm responding to your comments. But, you know, I want to know how you guys are doing, how your day's been going, and if you're doing okay. That's kind of important to me. I don't want it. And I can't wait until we live class tomorrow night. It's a Zumba fitness class. Natalie loves it when I do those. Because there's so much fun. It's like you're working out to the beat of the music and you're dancing. And so she really gets into it. So it'll be fun tomorrow night. Plus you get to watch me try that yuckiness before we start working out. <laughs> Alright, I got two minutes. Two minutes, guys. Are you ready for me to send, try this out? I know I am. But nobody's writing! When I start talking too much, it means it's time to end the live stream. That's because the live stream is going... There's not enough people in. That's usually how I gauge it. Who sent me a message? Um, who are you? It's one of those stupid things. Okay, never mind. Oh, yes, I'm gonna be excited. I actually catch you guys until it was done. I'm getting anxious. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this. I'm being quiet, Cody. So now are you happy? Here we go. Ah! Let's check this meat though. Oh, I think it's probably done. And it looks like, okay, the onions are caramelized. I'm going to try to turn the camera around so I can do this and you can watch me do it. Okay. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if I can do this. Okay, hold on a minute. I don't want to burn myself, that's why I'm worried. Okay, here we go. We're testing it. Look how good that looks though. I think it's pretty much there. Okay, hold on. Let me flip it back again. It looks good, guys. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go back into the light shot in a minute. Okay, almost there. I'm gonna let it cook for a little bit longer. It's only at 140 degrees, it's supposed to be at 160. Oh, you know what? I didn't get all the way in the meatloaf. Let's try it one more time. Hold on a second. I just realized I actually put it in, in the piece of the bacon and all the way down into the bottom of the meat. Good job, Elaine. Okay, 145. So yes, I still need to cook it longer. Grayson, are you okay? I hear you choking in there. Okay. Turning the heat up to finish it off. I'm going to cook it for another 10 minutes, but it does look good. I need to get it to 160 to 165 internal temperature. I figure higher heat for 10 minutes. It's at 145, so it's about 15 degrees off. Grayson, are you okay? He's getting a hairball, so sorry. You guys, if you hear something weird. He can't help it. Cats and dogs both do this. They can't help it. Grayson! Stop! Oh my god. He's acting weird. Just a minute. Okay, that's making me nervous. All right, let's try another 10 minutes on higher heat. Oh, he's on his way home. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this, but I'm going to show you in a short how, short how it's finished up, okay? Because it's not finished. I stayed on long enough. So whatever you do, keep moving, keep eating healthy, and don't ever give up. Like, comment, and share if you're a first-time subscriber. Don't forget to hit the little red subscribe button. See you in tomorrow night's live class, people. Live class tomorrow night. A taste test and chit chat, just like we did tonight. And a workout together, okay? So I'll see you tomorrow night. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget about Dixie's friends. Love all of you guys.